Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm San Katie Four, and welcome to Cannon Fodder. I loved this game when I was a child, and I still love it today. And I just thought, you know what? There are plenty of games out there, point and click shooters, and yeah, they're okay, but none of them can live up to Cannon Fodder. This is a game I can put on and play for five minutes or five hours and both times it feels exactly the same. I do not realise how long I've been playing for. So, we're going to just get into it today. I could talk about this for hours on end but that's not what you've come here for. You've come to see me play. So, let's get into it. Now, quickly before we do, you're seeing this screen because in games back in this era, they never actually had any menus. It was literally, you loaded the game up, you got the intro, and then the game started. So, let's click that play button and get the intro running before we start. This is the top of our approach to flight zone. Okay, and there we go, we're now into the game. And first things first, that intro music. I mean, I could just sit back and listen to that all day long. But, yeah, this is the intro screen. So we have our recruits coming down the bottom and our first two squad members, Jules and Jocks, the most famous cannon fodders of all. And not much else to say really regarding this, apart from, as I say, this is your main screen, not much on there at all. We've got our home and away side, we are the home side, so I'm guessing we're meant to be like defending or taking back our home line. But we'll get into level 1 and have a look. Now, level 1 is very basic, you start off in the tiniest of maps, you've got the enemy up here that is very well camouflaged. And you just move around with the left mouse button and the right mouse button. Shoots. And level one, nice and simple, just like that. It's basically just teaching you to move and shoot. After each mission, you will then get the victory screen. And it just goes through everyone who survived the final mission. And it will give them a promotion depending on how many levels they actually completed. Now the levels do not grant them additional attack power or health, it's just the scoring to show how many levels they made it through. Now we're back in the home screen, we can see more recruits coming down so that becomes handy for later levels and you can see that Jules got all three kills while Jock got none. And we're even granted a third member now, Stu. So let's get into level two and see what's in store for us. So again, it's kill all enemies. This mission is split into two. As you can see that phase one of two. So let's get in. Now in here we do have a river. So this is kind of showing us, you know, different terrains and whatnot. But you no, know, carry on, make sure you're looking out for everything and we'll just quickly go around because this level again is still technically tutorial level. Teaching about exploring, trying to find everything and having a look at making sure we can see that the enemies are camouflage 
and you don't want into that. And you know, you've got to keep your head. What I do find in as well is you can actually keep them alive by shooting them. You don't actually die until you stop shooting them. But yeah, there we go. So you've got a bridge there that we can get over. You can swim across waters, but while you're in water, you cannot fire and you move slower. So you need to be careful about going through water. Always try and find a way over if you can. But we'll just finish these last few off. And there we go. And I've got to say, I do love the way we celebrate at the end. I know there's no victory screen yet because we're now on phase two. And I was a little bit quick there clicking. But this one wants us to destroy a building. So this one is full of water because it's a nice river here. So the best way to deal with this one is try and keep to the one land on that and not be jumping back and two. The enemy does suffer the same penalties as yourself on any sort of land train, so it's best to let them go swimming while you stay on the land as much as possible. Now of course in some levels it's impossible to stay 100% on land, but the more you're on land the easier can be. Now there is a body here and you can actually use that to your advantage. Not so much in this level but in later, later ones you can actually shoot it along the water and use it as a shield and that can come in handy later on. But always be careful as well because you can get stuck on scenery and of course if you're stuck on scenery you cannot be concentrating on where you're going and who you're shooting at. Scenery again also does block bullet fire and other fire that we'll look into in later levels. But again, it's a case of just getting down. And these first few levels again have been pretty linear. There's not much difference between doing them. But you know, as I say, they are the first and the training ones. But get up and look around here, shoot the barrel there to blow the house off and be careful because if any part of that explosion hits you, whether it's the door coming off or the roof when it lands, then that will kill your troops. And that roof coming off is random in which direction it goes. So there we go, we've now completed both them levels and you'll see that both Jewels and Drops and Stu will get a double promotional rank because they both completed two phases. Back to the main screen now again and we'll see in a moment a, another lot of new recruits coming down and Jules is still picking up all the kills. It seems whoever's at the front gets the kill count but we now get a fourth member RJ so let's quickly now jump into the next level. So this one is an ice level and again there's only one phase of this one but we've got to destroy the buildings and kill all the enemies. Now buildings, I forgot to mention previously, do have an unlimited spawn number so until they're destroyed they will continuously keep producing enemy troops. Now we've got no way of destroying these at the moment but if we get down here a little bit you'll see that there's a crate now we blew it up in the last mission because well it was beneficial to in this we're going to pick it up because these crates contain grenades now to fire a grenade it is fairly simple you just fire with your the right button and then click with the left and it will throw a grenade we can also split our troops up now the ones we leave behind will fire on any enemy that comes within range so they are relatively safe you can be overwhelmed while you're away so it's a tactic to use but you do need to be careful as well but the thing is as well sometimes having just the one to run around is a lot safer than having them all together but you don't have to worry as well because once you've finished with the one you can either take them back or get them in a safe space 
and leave them there to fight you down on the enemies while you move the rest. But moving in a big group while, you know, you're keeping all your troops together. Oops, and um, missed that. So, yep, make sure you do hit them when you're firing. So, yeah, while keeping them together can be great for firepower. It also means that if there was an explosion, you know, more of them are going to die. But, there we go, that's a, another mission complete. And um, once again, we quickly get the victory screen and they'll all now get a promotion of their own. So again, Jules goes up another rank and so does Jock, both keep into the same rank because they've done the same amount of levels. Stu goes up another one and RJ gets his first promotion. Now, while I said before, you know, they're not actually going to get any stronger, it do, it's a nice way to see how long they've survived for. And as you can see, because we split them up, Jules has now got 69 kills and Stu and RJ have picked some up for themselves. Now, you might be looking here and seeing that the line is getting full. Not to worry, because behind the hill here, there is an infinite space for them to keep flying up. So, mission four, this is where it starts getting a little bit more difficult now. So, this one says, just destroy all the buildings. So, the first thing to do is try and find some grenades to destroy them. Now, walking on this pit does bring you out, and the safest way to actually get across any water like this is to leave one or more guarding while you send others over. That way, we, that way you then at least can ta see that that area is going to be safe. So let's just take Stu and RJ up here to scout ahead. And even though, as I say, we don't need to be killing them all off, you might as well because it will make it easier later on when you've got to revisit an area. So just quickly keep up the side here, making sure, trying not to get stuck on any scenery. Now up here you'll see there is a bit of new territory, the sand, and while most of the sand is fine, this dark area right here is actually quicksand. So any of your troops, or any of your troops if you can get them to wander on it, oh jeez where did you come from, I didn't see you, right, grab these, but yeah anyone that stands on that will be instantly killed. Right, so that that one destroyed and we've got one down south again so let's head back down here but you may have noticed that there are now new enemies spawning in because that hut down south has now activated and started pushing troops out so killing the ones from before has made it easier but it doesn't mean that just because there's no troops there you don't have to watch or go in back and that's another thing you need to be careful for. I blew the roof off but not the door and until both have gone then it doesn't class as it's been destroyed. But another thing as well once you bring them back you can't group select but if you click on the other group then it will join them back together. So we will quickly kill a few more of those off and yet there is a few bugs still in this game I've noticed regarding grenades but that doesn't change you know anything regarding you know, gameplay or tactics it's exactly the same so just sneak around grab what we can and kill everyone we see um, there we go another one down and then just quickly head up, trying not to miss any. So just take it slow and you should be okay. Later levels you do need to be a little bit faster for, but for now we're okay because we're all coming up against the gunners. And while gunners can be a pain and easily take out one or more if you miss them, there's a lot worse to come. And 
go and the ones come down because they are still spawning in so we'll get to them in a moment so quickly throw a grenade and there we go you saw there that the door came flying off blew up and killed him but was pretty, quite handy now phase two of four now we've got to kill them all and destroy the buildings and we've still got the four soldiers this one, as soon as you come in, you are surrounded and ambushed. So you do need to be on your toes on some of levels. Now, this is a very short level, but it can go to show that, you know, not to take every level as you think. Thankfully, that did blow off in that direction so we don't have to worry about being killed by a flying roof but now we've got a fifth soldier joining us and you can see there the building we've just destroyed is there so we're carrying on really and we've now started off with 10 grenades now this one is one of those where you're going to need to use tactics a bit more than you have done previously previously you could just keep them all together and run around this is the first one where it can, in a way, force you to split your team up. That hole there is not a hole that you can fall down, it's an enemy spawn point. And they will just come out infinitely, but you cannot destroy it. No amount of grenades will destroy it, and as you can see there, there are actually civilians in this one as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to split drops and stew off and leave the other three up there to defend that pole and we're just going to come in quickly and again we are spawning out of these huts so we're going to need to destroy them so that takes them out and we'll just quickly go and put some more grenades up and on the way out we'll blow the final hut up be careful you don't kill the civilians because, well, you don't want to be killed all the civilians. And always check as well, as I say, every part of the map. But the tools RJ and Ubik defending there, so they will take out anything that comes at our back, so we don't need to worry about new spawns. And I killed them a bit quick there, but that again there is quicksand that he is about to walk into there is a, another hut destroyed so that's all the huts now and if we just carry on searching there we go and yep you'll see there the enemy's walked into the quicksand and he's dead so that's that level completed now on to phase four so again kill all enemies and destroy enemy buildings as i say these missions are relatively basic with what you've got to do but you know it's the first couple of levels and they do get harder as you go on of course grenades only have a limited range but this one introduces a new danger to look out for as you go up you can see obviously there's quicksand there so make sure you miss that but you may or may not see it in a moment of these there is a little grey stone it's actually a mine and if you don't look out for it and notice it well it's going to take out several of your men but thankfully knowledge of playing this I remember it was there and then we just quickly run around here and let these few off before going towards the hut. Now sometimes it's best to go hunting and then go for the hut on some levels it's best just to get rid of the hut as quick as possible. But just making sure everybody's dead. There we go, another one hiding. There we go, just quickly turn these off. And there's our hook there. So, quick grenade, and they're all dead. Now, there are a few stragglers around, so again, we'll need to quickly go and find them. 
And yeah, that barrel there is rockets. You do not want to be going for them. Just about to miss that grenade that was thrown at us there. Because, again, that's quicksand and it will kill anyone who walks on it. So there we go, that is mission complete now. So that is all the phases complete. And again, we get our victory screen. Now, you can click past these and skip it, but I enjoy watching the music, the feel, it's just me, but I do really love watching them. The promotions go through and think how far you can get each soldier. So there's RJ now and Ubik. There we go. Right, so now we're going to go into level 5. But the first thing you may notice is RJ and Ubik have been greyed off. That's because on this one you are limited to 3. So it's not a case of keeping it all together. You have different amounts for each level. So this one again, as you can see, is an ice level. And you have to be careful because while there's two sets of water here, the light blue is fine, it just slows you down, but you can still shoot. And the dark blue is like in the previous levels, you have to swim through so you cannot shoot. The ice is also playing a part here as well because yours and the enemy's troop will slip on it if you're going too fast or even if you're stood still for too long and if they slip you can't fire so, pop these off and then a nice grenade in the middle as you can see we've got grenades and rockets now so we'll use a rocket in a moment now rockets are easy to use, it's exactly the same as using a grenade, the only thing you need to do is just select you want a rocket instead, and you can put it wherever you wish. Now while rockets are great for putting explosions wherever you want them, unlike grenades, they can be stopped by several things, for example, any elements, so trees, rocks, snowmen, buildings, you name it, that will stop it. So if you need to get past an object, then switch back to your grenades and then you can throw them over while he's firing at that tree. Now we've got another one up there to take care of. And yeah, as you notice, friendly fire is a big part. So always be careful, not just of your own troops, but trying to use that to your advantage on enemy troops as well. So we'll just come around here and we'll pick up some speed and throw a grenade to try and dodge that grenade, that rocket, and there's another one there, and one more, and dead. Right, so yeah, getting a couple of rocket launchers near you can be quite harsh really, but that's what you need to put up with, and there is a way around it. And the way around rocket launchers is to go solo. So come in here and quickly take this one out on the bottom there as you can see the rockets actually tend to land behind you when you're moving at full speed so the ones at the back are more than likely to actually get hit and killed by them but what we can do here is just quickly travel up north here there we go, that's one dead because we were too slow. But as I was saying about using the environment, there he blows himself up. We are able to get that one, so we didn't fire one there, and we've got enough one. So jewels and drops are the only two left now, but that's fine, these two can keep it going. Now again, if we go into split, we can then put one of them in a guard mode and use the other one to scout ahead just to make sure any grenades, uh, any rockets that are fired hopefully miss. So round we go, another building there, quick grenade for you and shoot you. There are others around, you need to be careful because that is a cliff there and if you fall off that one you will die. 
But, as I say, there is no actual fall damage on this game, and that is quite good actually, because so many times you'll end up falling off a cliff. So bring drops back round here, and again you can see the hole there, so that will spawn unlimited. So what we'll do is we'll jump back to the jewels and use him. So just quickly scout the area out to make sure there's nothing around. And now Jules is in a good spot to cover that and any that come over the water. We'll go back with Jops and bring him around to clear up the final area of the map we've not been to yet. Now I did miss one thing, because I said I was saying about houses, well there's a house over here that needs to be killed off. So we'll just go around here a moment and I'm gonna quickly destroy that one. And thankfully the hat so we didn't come too far. Now self here, and there is another one, and a load of missiles, so that could be handy in different circumstances. There we go, that one's dead now, and no! Okay, Jops was taken out, and we've got a rocket launcher over there, so we need to keep away from him. Right, that's another one down, so we're now down to just jewels, so can we finish this off? with him. Just be careful, we know we've got a rocket launch around here somewhere, so just keep our distance, but at the same time keep moving to hopefully avoid any of those rockets. Kill them off there, and we know that's dead. So, around here, and we've got a few, and another rocket there. These should be the last few now, so up towards the one that we know, yep, yeah, he's over there. So, what we get, and that was another close one there, but we managed to survive. And the last few stragglers, we can take them out. There! Tools are still fighting, but we had his team demolished. But now we've got four soldiers, so our recruits have gone down, because we brought some more in. So we've now got Jules, RJ, Ubik, and CJ. So CJ is the new one. So we need to just be careful here. And because rockets are now a thing, the best thing to do is scout ahead. And the best way to scout is put your group in a nice little area. Pick one. In this case, we're going to go with RJ. And I'm going to say he's not having any grenades or rockets because he's basically going to be scouting. So try and keep him as safe as possible and kill what you can while scouting ahead. Now this level is the first level as well that introduces a new mechanic and yeah we're lucky to dodge that rocket there. So head down and kill him. As you can see there, there is a ramp. So come down here, it also introduces barbed wire and you just may have got a clip there I'll show you in a moment as we get round the other side of it there is actually a vehicle in this one so if we just get down here and kill him and we manage to fire a rocket off and kill us, great right, so bring the squad down because we now know this area is clear but yet, yeah, there we go, there is a vehicle there, so we can get into vehicles. We need to get past this barbed wire, and the only way to do it is a grenade. And we're lucky at this there. So, again, it's quite simple, just click on it, and the vehicle will move. And you just need to be careful, you don't keep crashing into things. Now, there's no health bar on it. Again, it's just a bit like one of your troops. So you need to get it, and you don't actually click on it, you just click over and hang it. That's not good. They drown. So they're all dead. So now we're going to get four new troops, and we're going to have to try that again.
So Chris, Pete, Hadja and Hector. So start off again the same. Just bring them down here into a nice safe spot. We kind of know where everything is now, so I'm going to take Hector again, exactly the same. And I'm going to go and scout ahead and take out everything we can kill. So I'm going to quickly rush him down here, then we've got to fire early. And kill you before you can get a shot off. And we know there's another rocket up here, yes, there we go. A lot easier that time. And we'll just take the last one out here. Right, let's go and pick them rockets up now. And it's nice and cool. There we go. Easily done this time. Right. Let's go and pick the rest of the squad up and then we'll go and try this car. Well, snowmobile, isn't it? Again, make sure you do click on the team. There we go. So yeah, even though it's very basic, it's really fun and enjoyable and there are a lot of tactics involved. We can blow this up and as I say, there you go. You've just seen it there. The roof went off in a completely different direction last time and blew the car or snowmobile up. So we now need to get across another way. So let's split the team up again. This time Tadja can go over solo. Nope, no, I meant to split, not start walking. Everyone get back on onto the land. Right, there we go. He can go over on his own. We'll keep them there to try and cover. And um, because we know there's a rocket launcher up there, we're gonna just keep him down here and that close. That's that's very Whoa, how how we survive that, I don't know. Another one there, take you out. Okay, so now he's here, we're going to put him there and we're going to get another one and bring him over. So this time we're going to take some grenades and rockets with us. And hopefully Chris can get across just the same as Tadja did. And yet this time we managed... Oh, yeah, that was close. Thought he was going to make it then without having a shot fired at him. There we go. Tadja will get you down there to cover that. While Chris can go up and take care of this rocket launcher so we pull the people across. Kill them off and we've lost somebody. That's what I was on about being careful for. Todd has actually died. So yeah, he wasn't able to keep up with the map coming at him and well, Chris has finished it off but we had another loss. So because we've had losses and we're at now at the end of the mission, we get our condolences. So we get to find out everybody who died and in what order. So Steve was the first to die. Then we lost Jops. RJ was next to bite the bullet. Followed by Jules and Ubik who drowned. Along with CJ. And then Tadget was just unable to defend his spot and also was killed off. We don't know how he died, we just know he did. And then we get the victors, the ones who survived, and they will now all get their promotions. And once they've got that, we will see that the home screen has changed slightly now we've had our first loss. So Chris, Pete and Hector have all survived and because they're only in the one mission they only get the one level promotion but yet yeah, back on the home screen now you will see that there are now gravestones one for everybody we have lost and in the hero section the dead are there in order of kills so you can just see you know what rank they got to and how many kills they had in total. But you know what ladies and gentlemen, I think you get the idea. This is Cannon Fodder and I could carry on playing this for hours on end and you know what, 
I probably will carry on after this recording because I've enjoyed my time with this so much. So, that is this week's Sunday Surprise episode. Join me next week and I will have a, another game. What will it be? Well, I'm not telling you because then it wouldn't be a surprise. But in the meantime, I've been saying 84 This has been the always wonderful Cannon Fodder. Thank you so much for joining me. Look after each other. And until next time, goodbye.